Well, let me say what my next vision is on a project that we're actually working on, which is our collections redesign. And this is connected to the Getty Online Scholarly Catalog Initiative. Um, and I think a lot of people are working on this. I know a lot of people are working on this, this idea that we need a sort of human consumable version of our collections in addition to a scholarly deep dive. Um, and I, I missed the Usability Lab yesterday where Stedelec demonstrated their new co collection site, but I, I've seen it, and their idea of, of connecting to external resources is very much in line with, with where the Walker's website has gone. And it's something that we really want to apply to our collections now. There are open APIs that we can start to say, we have collected this artist in depth, SFMOMA has collected this artist in depth, Stedelec has collected this artist in depth, we are not the final authority on this artist. We have a lot, but here are other places to go. So this is part of our collection's vision. In addition to not having, and I don't have the answer to this yet, but we're very committed to not dropping people into sort of just a grid result of our collections. We've seen some fabulous demonstrations over the years of, of collections visualizations, whether it's tiny thumbnails over year they were acquired, year they were created, sorting by color. Lev Manovich has done some, and Peter, uh, just, I just lost his last name from the, uh, anyway, <laughs> has done some amazing vis visualizations of collections. Um, so this really excites me, the way that we can provide interfaces to this from a sort of object-centric view. I've, I've really advocated in the past for this, you know, sort of combined filtering search and browse, giving users the whole collection to start with so they don't have that intimidating search box to look at. And I think where we're sort of landing now is is sort of clusters of objects and really making an object itself the, the starting point. From there, rather than trying to take in what are, what are big data sets, that is, we can't get our heads around these, starting at an object, making logical next connections, whether it's to the next object by this artist, next in a, in a collection that we've made, next in an exhibition that this was in, the next that was created in a timeline, or zooming back out from this object to see it connected with any of those other sets. Bigger views and smaller views, but object-centric with the sort of as deep dive as you want within the same page. Um, so we can have as much or as little just by scrolling down the page and have our scholarly article right there. All of the connections within that hyperlinks just like the web is meant to be. So we've got some really exciting ideas around that. I think collections online is sort of a perpetual problem for museums. We, we continue to talk about this problem. I think there's an interesting moment of intersection now with this sort of scholarly publishing and collections. And I think the, if we can sort of tear down the distinction between that, we'll really have that answer to how do we give this you know, scholarly deep dive, all this good data, and then also a way for a casual user to just say, this is an object, and take it in at the level that they appreciate it at. Um, and make that as, as seamless and fluid as possible. We'll, we'll let you know how it goes. <laughs>